In today's video, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about hair lights. Before we get started today, if you guys enjoy learning from me in these videos, you would probably really like learning from me in person, and I'll be teaching workshops again this year, and you can find out more information and sign up at johngress.com slash workshops. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and press that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and sign up for the bell. So today's topic is all about hair lights, and a hair light is essentially just a light boomed high and behind your subject, that illuminates the top of their head and their shoulders. This is meant to create separation between them and the background, and it can also maintain detail in the top of their hair, or I should say detail in their hair on top of their head. You can actually see a hair light on that set behind me back there right across the top of the frame. And I actually have a hair light on my hair right now that's separate from that one. So a modifier that you can use for a hair light could really be anything. You could use a standard seven inch reflector for instance, but the issue you might run into with that is that a small hard source like that will be sort of uh, create light that's more blasted onto your subject. And for the most part, stylistically, I would rather use a soft hair light source just so I could paint a very subtle edge. The other thing that you'll run into with a small, uh, you know, seven inch reflector type of hair light is that you might create a shadow from your person's head onto their shoulder and sort of break that separation line. You might also end up sort of not having enough coverage as far as the width goes. So just keep that in mind. Most of the time, I like to use a strip softbox, about a 35 by 90 centimeter one made by Allen Chrome. And that's the one that you see back here. This one in particular has an accessory on the front that causes its face to be recessed. And the reason for that is just so that you have about a two inch lip of fabric at the bottom, and that way when the light comes out, it hits that lip and it doesn't necessarily spill on to the backdrop. And if it does, it doesn't make that big of an impact. You could use a strip box with a grid, and that's what I did for a long time. For a long time, I used a medium-sized Shamira strip box with a grid. And if you have a group of people, you might wanna use a very uh, wide or long, large uh, strip box. So I will use my Ellen Crumb Indirect 100, uh, well, Ellen Crumb Indirect um, strip box. I'll put its size on the screen, I can't remember at the moment. Or before, I would use a Profoto one by six foot uh, strip box, which must be about uh, 30 by 180 centimeters. The Ellen Crumb Indirect is a similar size. But the reason for that is that you can get enough coverage to cover a small group of people, whereas the 90 centimeter wide strip box will work really well for covering one person. And since it's wider than a person is, um, you'll be able to make sure that you have full coverage across the whole top of their shoulders and their head, even if you don't have it precise, uh, even if you don't have it placed precisely. Now you could use a rectangular softbox or an umbrella, or uh, you could use a beauty dish. I'm actually using a 28 inch beauty dish for my hair light right now. And the reason is I'm being a little bit lazy. It easily adapts to my Bowens mount video lights. And that's the reason why I use it most of the time when I'm shooting these videos. But the problem that I do run into from time to time is that the light from that hair light ends up illuminating uh, the top of my forehead and, and it just doesn't look as flattering as I would like it to look. So if you use a regular softbox or an umbrella, you might run into that situation. The other thing to think about is mounting. So a lot of the times I will use a, a large stand and a boom and boom that hair light out so that it's sort of halfway between the subject and the backdrop and it's pointed down at about 45 degrees towards the subject's head. I think that is fairly ideal, but if you don't have a lot of headroom in your studio, you could simply use a strip box placed exactly horizontal 
pointed directly at the camera um, on a regular stand and have that sit just right above your backdrop. That way it only takes out about 30 centimeters or about one foot of space in your total setup. And that works out really well. Now, brightness is really important when we're talking about our hair light. When I was coming up about 20 years ago, uh, the older photographers would say that you wanted to have your light about two stops brighter than your person's face if they had dark hair and one stop brighter if they had blonde hair. Now, I really suggest that you do not do that because it will look really stupid. So about 20 years ago, the trend was to have this light or our accent lights, you know, edge lights and hair lights, to have them be very distinct and I don't feel that that fits in well with today's style. And so most of the time, I have my hair light about two stops darker than my subject's face because all I wanna do is create just a hint of separation and add or keep that detail in the hair on the top of their head. Now, if they have white hair or blonde hair, that light may be down around three or four stops below the brightness of their face. In addition, if your subject has a lot of gel in their hair, you're probably gonna wanna turn the hair light down as well because if it's too bright, it's just going to look really reflective and it's just not gonna fit in well with the style, or particular style, at least the style that I feel is more current today. Now, I have had some subjects with really thick, dark hair, and for those people, I've had to turn up the exposure of my hair light to equal about one stop brighter than their face. Back to those 1990s levels. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen sometimes. And when I say that I want the light to be a certain stop level different than their face, I'm talking about metering the light that's falling on the top of their head with my light meter. Now, sometimes I don't use a light meter and I just sort of you know, do it randomly and make it look good. Mostly what you guys are gonna have to do is just sort of train your eye to figure out what level of brightness fits your taste, but just know that if you're using a light meter, that two stop down point is probably where you're gonna wanna start at, and then you're just, wanna, then you're just going to want to adjust your hair lights brightness until it gets to where it looks right aesthetically. Anyway, guys, I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave that below. And as always, stay safe, call your mom, and I'll talk to you soon.